there are three things we need to do to encourage students who haven't normally participated as much in STEM to go into the field and to be successful. And the first is to convince them that they can, in fact, be successful. We've seen that if you remind girls of their gender simply by having them check off whether they're male or female before they take the SAT, they will not do as well, statistically speaking, on the mathematics portion. And you can have the same effect in African-American male students in, in calculus classes. You can have the same effect for Christian students when they are reminded that there is a perceived conflict between science and, and, and their religion. So you can do that effect, which we call stereotype threat, happens to everybody. And, and it does affect student outcomes. But there are things we can do, and it, it starts with teachers. The first is to make teachers aware of their own often very unconscious bias, their beliefs that some of their students, because of the groups they come from, are not going to do as well. In physics in particular, uh, Zara Hazari has shown that girls whose teachers talk to them about the underrepresentation of women in physics and the reasons for it, and that it's not just because we're not as good at it, are actually more likely to go into physics. So there are things that, that teachers can do and, and need to do to help their students believe that they can succeed in STEM. And the second thing we need to do is to help students develop spatial visualization skills. Those have been shown to be a mediator, not just in physics and engineering and other physical sciences, but also in mathematics. And this is something we don't ever take a class in, but the students who played with more Legos, who played Tetris more, actually are helping to develop those skills. And these are things that we can incorporate into our classes that will help our students succeed. The third thing we need to do is to show students that in fact they want to go into science, technology, engineering, and mathematics because that is the route to a better life for them and for people they, they care about. If you ask girls, are you interested in becoming an engineer, most of them will say no. But if you ask them, would you like to help develop a tent city for refugees in an emergency situation, well that they're interested in. That problem uh, appeals to them. If we can make math and science classes into solving problems in the world using math and science rather than simply abstract numbers and equations using what's called a project-based approach to learning, students will not only be more motivated, so they'll work harder and longer, it will also improve their learning of the basic math and science that we were trying to teach them in the first place. So I think that's the, the third solution, is, is showing students that in fact learning science and math is going to help them solve problems for themselves and people they care about in the real world.